In this video, learn how to use tape reading to enter a profitable swing trade. Hi, I'm Mike Bellafiore, co-founder of SMB Capital, and we're a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan. And I'm also the author of the trading classic, One Good Trade, and the playbook. In this video, two prop traders and I present an outstanding entry using the level two, tape reading, for a profitable swing trade. Let's get to work on sharing these important trading lessons so you can grow your trading account. So this is going to be a consolidation breakout trade in Big C from earlier this week. This has been constantly breaking out to new all-time highs on really large volume, and it's just really been in play the this past week as a, a major mover. So you'll see up here, we'll have the level two for Big C and the um, five-minute chart, um, and this is what the one-minute looks like before the trade. We should give a, a little bit of context. This is a bit of a mix between a breaking news play and a low float trade. Um, Big C midday on Tuesday announced that they were partnering with Facebook and basically we're going to offer them infrastructure such that anyone that was shopping on Instagram could directly go through checkout on the app. Um, so as well, Big C is a recent IPO, IPO at the beginning of August, just under 30 million shares. So it's definitely going to be able to put in some squeezes, especially with news this significant. And one more thing to recognize is all-time highs were put in on its second day at 104. So we're gonna be watching that as a potential catalyst for, for more squeezing. This trade is a, a midday trade, a consolidation buy and then breakout. So you can see it's about 11.45, Big C had worked its way from $80 to 100. And then we had this consolidation area. You'll see on the tape, we'll point it out, this 95 is a really big support level and there's little support below it at like 94. So we're really looking for a hold in this area of 95, some clear buying, and hopefully a breakout to the upside for new all-time highs. So I'll start out the tape here. And what we're really just going to point out for the start, it's going to be a little slow, but this 95 area is going to really support and really spend some time there. This is a five minute chart now. So you can just see we're really slowing in this area. So Matt and I were going over this uh, in real time because everyone was watching this with the breaking news. And in my eyes, I was watching this 95 level, we both were, and if you're looking for a short squeeze trade here, there are really two ways you could look to approach it, at least from my playbook. One being 95 holds for another five or so minutes and just buy into it and risk a, a wick below there. Or what we see in this case is that 95 breaks and quickly rebids, um, and that's even a, a stronger buy signal in my opinion. So first of all, um, you can't see it as much on the five minute chart, but our initial move up in big C had 95 as resistance, and then it then broke through, made another leg higher, and same idea of resistance becomes support. 95 began holding again, and now we're forming about a 30-ish minute wedge against 95 as a bottom. Yeah, we're expecting if there's going to be a lower high in this for continuation, that this lower high would hold this 95 area, as that's where we initially broke out from, and we saw a lot of volume trying to hold it down there. So if they can hold it over this level, then those shorts are potentially still underwater, and we can see a squeeze higher to new all-time highs. So, as Graham said, we were looking at this and we were saying, all right, we know 95 is a big level. I think the most attractive way for us to get long is to see a move under 95 and a quick rebid, as Graham said, over 95. And that's actually what we'll see come in here in a second. So we're <clears throat> breaks below 95, holds in this 94 area. And VWAP's not is still back down to like $90, so this is still holding high. We haven't really seen that follow through to the downside. And it's important to recognize that at this point in the trade, there's big positions short and long deciding which way this thing is gonna go. And 95 is the obvious level for a bunch of longs to stop out. 
and the fact that we don't actually follow through to the downside after it cracks and here we rebid it, uh, it shows a real sign of strength that buyers are willing to buy this uh, even down to 93. So if this can hold up here, my ideal entry, our ideal entry would be if this can consolidate up above 95 again for two or three minutes and really hammer in long. So I believe this was about near our long signal entry because we had just bid under 95 again, but it was a lot shallower this time. It only gets like 9460s and then it quickly pulls back up to 95 again, really showing us people are buying this under 95 for, for certain because we've seen this happen three times now. And remember, this is breaking news with Facebook, obviously a massively strong company, especially in this market environment. Um, and it's only an hour into the news breaking. So this thing should certainly have some, some legs forward. So I want to pose a question to you guys. So when it pulled into 95, did you bid in front of 95 before you saw anything on the tape, before you saw the strength on the tape? I did not either. I waited till we saw the hold over 95 after the test below. Just because I knew if it starts holding below 95 and then quickly gives out, this thing could give out another two or three points right back to VWAP, really giving some tough risk to reward until what I felt like was confirmation that we can hold over 95 because we tested below previously and really couldn't break down. Yeah, and also we just squeezed up about 35% in about 30 minutes. So I'm imagining this is gonna need some time to breathe. And also we haven't seen 95 tests several times, so I wanna confirm that that's a real level that's being watched. Yeah, and like Matt said, this can slip out really far under you if you just blindly go in before it confirms. If you wanna learn three real world setups that our traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven figure big money earner, check out the free webinar that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing right now at the top right hand corner of your screen. That's gonna open up this free registration page in the new window. So don't worry, you're not gonna lose this video. You're gonna learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. So one thing for you guys to consider is, and that makes perfect sense, one thing for you guys to consider with your strategies as you get a little bit more advanced is to allocate some risk just based on price. A minority of the risk just based on price, but some risk just based on price. So for example, you might, if you really like the breaking news, you, th you have some uh, edge with breaking news as a pattern in of itself, meaning th the news should make the stock finish high of day. Uh, you could allocate 20% uh, of your risk per trade based on price and then wait for the confirmation to add another 80% that you're going to risk on this particular trade. I'm not saying you should do that. I'm saying that there are traders that build their system around putting a percentage of risk based on price and then a percentage of risk based on when they see it, uh, when they feel like they have a good grasp that this is a special situation and that this thing could really run to high of day. I actually like at the beginning of your trading career, as you're developing as a trader, for you to keep that percentage at zero or for you to keep that percentage really low and for you to be able to see the turn, so that, or to see the pull in and the pull in stop or to see it turn back up or to see the strength on the tape. I'd like for you, for you to be able to see it, that, that, that area that you can risk off of. So in this case, the signal from the, from the level two from tape reading that you can trade off of. Uh, there are gonna be traders and you'll see this with Shark. You saw this today with Shark in HLF, yep. uh, how he was allocating a certain percentage of risk after breaking news into a pop after the stock had dipped a bunch without actually seeing it turn. That is, and again, that's a more advanced topic, but something to be thinking about. I, I do really prefer for you guys to see the turn. I, I, I think that 
is better for your development. That makes sense how people could use that system to get a better price, just get their feet wet, get a little more information. Um, what you give up by waiting to always see it and to leave all of your risk to after you see it is the times when it pulls in, it stops, and it just runs to highs. It pulls in, it doesn't really have a tremendous amount of volume, the sellers stop, and then people chase, 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 chase higher, and you, you miss that pulling based on price. You can study how much you're gonna miss overall with your particular breaking news strategies and whether or not you, you should even worry about that. I suspect you probably don't. I suspect if you save full risk for after you see it, you're gonna make plenty and be able to trade that bigger and have a better risk reward on a breaking news trade or a pull in trade or a high volatility trade. But I want you, you guys to be exposed to how some of the experienced traders will divide up their risk. Um, and then the other thing is when you're in a position, when you buy the pull in based on price for a little bit and you have that position, you do tend to watch it better when you have risk on, when you have a little bit of a small position, it does help you to track that particular opportunity better. Definitely. And I, I think that price-based risk, it makes a lot more sense for breaking news trades like this. Um, and I feel like, at least for me personally, I was treating it more as a low float short squeeze setup when in reality, it's, it's kind of a combination of the two. Um, but in my own personal trading right now, one of my main variables that I look for to take the trigger to actually enter into these trades is what we see here with this 95 rebid. Um, so once I see that, I'm willing to put on big size, but I do hear you. That's, that's a good thing to be looking forward to. So right here, we'll see the 95 rebid signaling us long, and then we'll see some nice continuation once this level really holds. So we s hit on 95, really hold it. We get long. I think it was like 95.10 was my entry. Yeah, and, and now Matt and I are talking over audio chat and we're saying, you know, the idea for this trade, we're still putting on some risk given how much this could fall out. The idea of this trade is really to see high of day and for this thing to really squeeze up towards uh, all time highs at 104. So that'll pick up in a sec here. We can see we're in the 96s. Now, speed on the tape's kind of picking up a bit. I just want to clarify for some of the younger guys watching, when you see a level, we have this 95 as a level, and we see a stock leak below that level, can't hold below that level, and then rebid to that level, that's a signal from our tape reading skills, from our level two indicator, that uh, this could be a sign of strength, that our are reading the tape skills are giving us a signal in of themselves that there is strength at this level. We're not gonna make lots of trades just with reading the tape. We're putting variables together, but we want to get used to understanding the signals that come from reading the tape that are more important, and that's a more important signal. Leak below a support level that we suspect can't really hold below that level, rebid to that level, some volume done around that level, not trading below that level, that's a signal. You know, so we, that, and we saw that the other day with Dick's Sporting Goods on the short side. 54 was the resistance level, it leaked above that level, it couldn't hold above that level, there was some volume done around that level, it held below that level, just couldn't trade above that that triple intraday top. And so you're seeing the mirror image, uh, you're seeing not quite the mirror image, but a subset of what that looks like on the, on the long side. All right, I just wanted to point that out. Sorry guys. So I'll speed this up a little bit. Um, like we said, our plan is really this should make new all time highs. So in terms of selling some risk, um, we only or I only sold one fourth into like one hundred and one dollars just in case it rejected at that new high. But we're really holding the core of our position for a new all time high. 
I think that's part of why team trading is really nice because it's very hard to uh, sit on your hands while this thing is working in your favor, but we're both just kind of keeping ourselves accountable. Like we, you know, we owe it to ourselves to hold on to this position towards high of day. Exactly. That's kind of what we were saying. We were like the amount of information we gathered and the risk we're taking, we really should give ourselves the opportunity to get paid and see this really good breakout because the variables we were looking for are playing out in front of our eyes. So clearly we're seeing something, um, on the tape and, and in the stock that could work in our favor. So we really want to let that work for us when it's uh, a good entry price, as we saw. So I'll skip ahead here to kind of where we start to break out. And what I love about this is, Matt and Graham, is so often when people think about reading the tape, level two trading, they think of scalping. They think about the only reason why we read the tape is to make scalp trades. This is a perfect example of how you're using your reading the tape skills to enter for something that's going to become a swing trade for you guys. You're looking for a shorter term swing trade, an, an intraday swing trade. You're looking for, hey, where do I buy this at support and try and hold this for a run? And you're going to look at a level that you identify on your chart as a, a thesis for where this may pull into, but then you're really going to zero in on the tape near those levels. You're really going to use your reading the tape skills to see where you can enter effectively for a swing trade. And when you can do that, you know, essentially you're using your reading the tape skills to get in at the best prices for your swing trade ideas. That's gonna make your swing trading much more profitable. That's gonna make your swing trading have a much better ROI. That's gonna enable you to take on much more risk with your swing trading because your risk reward is, is so much better. And the idea of all of this is for you guys to be able to trade with a lot of size and when you can enter at better prices, and when you can enter at a much better risk reward, that means you can size up significantly more. Agreed. Those are the trades to definitely build a career off of that you can scale them up because your risk is so defined and the tape reading is definitely one of, in my trading, the biggest positives in helping me really define that risk in the levels. So going back to the tape, um, you'll see here we just broke out. Um, to a new high. So we're going to be slowly scaling out into strength, but we're really holding our core for a real reason to exit. Yeah. And, and again, this is somewhat of a short squeeze trade. There's going to be a bunch of shorts that have piled in over the last 15, 30 minutes against that 101.50 or whatever the high was. Um, so a lot of them are getting stopped out right now. And we want to be able to see that short squeeze kind of die down before we take our profits. So we can see the bids are stepping up slowly, but then we really pick up speed here into 103. So this is important. So we're thinking, all right, this should really break out here. Tape's picking up. This should be a strong breakout. Nothing, no really levels above to like 10, I think five it is. 104 is the all-time high. 104 is the all-time high. So we're really expecting this to go through 104 at this new all-time high. But we're going to see soon, we're going to get over this 103, make a huge up move, and instantly reject. So like right there, we just went to 103.70, and instantly pulled back to 102.70. So that's not anything crazy, but to us, that's signaling, all right, this really should have broke out to new all-time highs. Might be some, some sellers stepping in here. We really thought it would go, so we're taking off some more risk here. And then we'll see here again, we're watching, all right, if we get over this 103 again, we should really get to 104, make a new high. A point's not that crazy of a move for this, especially if it is squeezing shorts, another point. Yeah, so I still actually have all of that core left because it, we really might need more than one try to break through 104, but if we're still struggling, yeah, it's time to readjust. Yeah, so like that time we got through 103 again, but then came back under the level. 
Um, and then you can see, sorry, I skipped that a little too far. Gonna pull from 103, I think, right back into 101. Yep, and this is where I got out. Yeah, we really were expecting it to hold this 103 up here, hold over that 101.50, and when we're pulling back into that. Because it's already made about an ATR move up from where we were in. It's gone up almost, um, what was that, 15 points? I think the ATR was like 10 or 11. And... So that was our real exit when it just like stalls up here. Can't really hold this 101.50, which was the initial breakout. And you see you get back under and then pull back to 100. And that's actually the high for the morning there. So it didn't end up to be able to be a huge swing. But still the risk to reward on a setup like this is great. And we want to take this every time. Whether we get brand new all-time highs or just a nice breakout like this, you're still going to get paid. So I'll skip ahead just for the morning. You can kind of see just becomes like a chop zone for the afternoon. Um, we knew a lot of volume was done on both sides. We're in the range, so we're not touching it in range. And kind of just seeing how prices develop into the afternoon to maybe trade this the next day. And to use those levels we saw today into an opening drive potentially the next day. Because we don't always want to trade these consolidations into the close. Hey, go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos they're producing for you in the trading community. And please take the time to add your feedback in the comments section for what videos you'd like for us to produce next and what you found helpful from this video. From all of us at SMB, train and trade well.